Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the temperature of gas in the universe, or actually the average temperature of various material in the universe. Because it turns out that things have been warming up quite dramatically, and the universe seems to be getting hotter and hotter. But let's talk a little bit more about this, because there are going to be a few things we need to clarify here. First of all, it's very important not to get confused with the average temperature of the universe, which has been decreasing over time. As a matter of fact, today we know that the average temperature of the space itself around us will be around 2.73 Kelvin, or about 2.73 degrees above the absolute zero. And we know that the universe is cooling down and used to be much, much hotter in the first few millions of years. As a matter of fact, in the first 10 to maybe 20 million years of the existence of the universe, the temperatures may have been just around the same temperatures as what you have right now in your room. In other words, the conditions were just perfect for liquid water to exist. Which of course means that there are certain theories that suggest maybe life actually did start back then as well. But we have absolutely no proof of any of this and we definitely don't really know how to even start looking for proof of this early life in the universe. What we can do, however, is measure the temperatures a little bit farther back in time and as a matter of fact the scientists have done at least one major investigation where they were able to calculate the very precise average temperature of the universe about 7.2 billion years ago. The temperature was about 5.2 degrees Kelvin, just a little bit warmer than it is today. But although the cooling will continue for a very long time and there's even hints that maybe one day the universe will become extremely cold and we'll experience what's known as the heat death of the universe where everything becomes so extremely cold and so extremely isolated from one another that essentially everything just kind of stops. In reality, a lot of this average cooling is actually from the fact that the universe is also expanding and the expansion itself is basically creating a lot more volume out there. But the gas itself, the material inside the galaxies and the material around us, including of course the stuff we're made from, has been actually heating up quite dramatically. And the recent study that you can find in the description below was able to precisely calculate by how much the universe, or technically the material, the stuff in the universe, has heated up over the past 10 billion years. And the actual number is quite staggering. But let's first talk about what they've done and how they've done it. Today we know that we can actually look at various spots around the universe and identify the average temperature in those locations by looking at certain emissions such as a very specific value that I usually have trouble pronouncing, known as Comptonization Parameter. Now, we can use this, for example, to look at this beautiful boomerang nebula and discover that the temperature here is only around 1 degree Kelvin, actually colder than the average temperature in the universe, which is most likely caused by the expansion of the gas and this expansion process lowers the temperature even more. And this is, by the way, how refrigerators and, of course, air conditioners work as well. The gas expansion in certain regions of the fridge create the cooling conditions that are necessary to preserve our food. But that's of course a topic for another day. Here we're talking about how we measure these things. And Compton scattering, and specifically inverse Compton scattering, is one such technique. The principle is somewhat simple. When certain photons strike certain electrons, they end up creating these scattered gamma rays and of course energized electrons, which could then be measured from planet Earth. But it works both ways. So a charged particle, a charged electron in this case, can actually transfer its energy into a photon, turning, for example, an X-ray into a gamma ray, giving it more energy. And this is what we refer to as the inverse Compton scattering. And this is something that scientists have learned to essentially measure extremely accurately. It's also something that can usually tell us a lot about whatever is happening in that particular region where the scattering is occurring. And one of the major ways that this is used to measure various parameters in the universe is the effect known as Sunayev Zeldovich, which refers to various temperature fluctuations that can be detected in the cosmic microwave background, the map of which you see right here, that is often caused by the scattering effects uh, that I previously described. In other words, it's something somewhat complex and somewhat difficult to kind of understand, but in a nutshell, what this allows us to do is to look at a specific part of the universe, somewhere out there using the cosmic microwave background, and discover how warm or how cold things were, based on these various fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background. 
And by identifying the redshift parameters of where these effects are coming from, we can then also establish the distance and thus the age of when this happened. And so by looking at these various regions around the universe, they discovered that it seems that as we keep looking farther and farther in history, which is represented by the redshift value z here, the thermal energy in the universe seems to drop as well. Which suggests that the present gas is much hotter than it used to be billions of years ago. And specifically here they focused on two things. The gas located in the various dark matter halos created by, for example, the cosmic web, and also the gas present in various massive and powerful galactic clusters. Now, it seems that ancient galactic clusters did have a lot of really hot material, but it was only hot in these areas. The gas outside of these areas, the gas present in various cosmic webs and various other locations in the universe, was actually about 10 times cooler. But as we get closer and closer to the modern times in the universe, the gas everywhere seems to have heated up. It's much warmer on average, about 10 times warmer, than it was about 10 billion years ago. With the average temperature of gas in the past being about 200,000 degrees Kelvin, and the gas in the modern times being closer to about 2 million degrees Kelvin. Basically 10 times hotter. Which by the way is around 4 million degrees Fahrenheit. And a lot of this actually confirms the idea from the Nobel laureate Jim Peebles who talked about this and who proposed all of this years ago. In other words, this is a confirmation of a hypothesis and it of course kind of makes sense as well. Because essentially what this means is that a lot of these extremely massive and very large structures are formed when various types of mass and various types of gas collapses inside of it. And this collapse of gas through the action of collapsing, starts creating more and more heat on the inside. In this case, you can think of it as what happens in the fridge and, of course, in the air conditioner, but on the other side, where the gas is compressed and makes everything hot. If you've ever put your hand behind the fridge, for example, you know that it's very hot behind it. And all of this, of course, confirms once again that there are these really massive formations known as cosmic webs that seem to have accumulated very large massive amounts of gas over time, and in the last 10 billion years, they have also increased in temperature because of this accumulation of gas from everywhere in the universe. We don't really see them very well, but there have been a lot of different confirmations from various studies that they do exist, and they do seem to possess a lot of mass present in the universe. But this is actually something I'm going to be talking about in another video, and that's somewhere on the channel, in regards to the mysterious invisible matter, which is actually not dark matter at all even though the cosmic web, for the most part, is made out of dark matter as well. And so these extremely violent effects from the gas just accumulating and colliding with each other and essentially creating a lot of drag and a lot of interaction is what's heating up the universe and is going to be heating up the universe for billions of years in the future as well. So the average temperature of, for example, a typical galaxy or a typical cosmic web string is going to be hotter and hotter and hotter. Until, of course, things expand just enough when all of this starts to cool down again. And because this study was based on looking at things closer to us and comparing them to things farther away from us, so far it kind of makes sense. But they haven't really looked at that many regions just yet. So confirming these discoveries and also trying to do follow-up studies and seeing what exactly they discovered and if there are any mistakes in the study is going to take some time. Now, for now, it definitely makes sense theoretically, but we don't really know if this makes sense observationally until confirmation studies in the future. For now though, it does seem like the universe is going to be heating up even more and the average temperature of gas in the universe is going to increase quite dramatically for many many billions of years in the future. But unfortunately that's kind of all we have learned from this study and that's all we know about the past and the future of the universe and the gas in it. Once we discover something else and once we learn something else about how the universe and the temperature in it has changed over time, I'm going to make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and also check out the study itself in the description below. Maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.